This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good morning, everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruchem Abayim. I would like to share with you today uh, two inyanim, because this week we have a double parsha. So one for Vayakel, and one for Pekude. Parsha Vayakel begins with the command about Shabbos. The reason for Shabbos, of course, we know, is enunciated in the Ten Commandments. Why? Because God created the world in six days and He rested on the seventh day. The simple enunciated reason for Shabbos is since HaKadosh Baruch Hu rested from his malacha on the seventh day. Let's see, how do we do this? Since HaKadosh Baruch Hu rested from his malacha, from malacha on the seventh day, so therefore we also rest on Shabbos. That's the reason stated for Shabbos. The question though is that what are the malachas that you're now to, you're now to do? The Malachas you now to do are the Lamed Tess of his Malachas that are enumerated in the Mishnah and Shabbos, Tafai and Gimel. So we have to understand if the reason why we are commanded to rest on Shabbos is to commemorate that God created the world in six days and He rested on the seventh day, why specifically would the Malachas that we're now to do be the Malachas needed to build the Mishkan? Chazal say, that the source of the Malacha Shabbos is, it says, and they are the Lamed Tes Malachos that were done in the Mishkan. But, uh, you know, how do you reconcile those two things? If the reason we're keeping Shabbos is to commemorate that Kaddish Baruch Hu created the world in six days and He rested on the seventh day, then... What does the Malachas HaMishkan have to do with anything? Man dachar shmei. You know, how do you put together the idea that the Malachas were commanded not to violate are the Malachas needed to build the Mishkan, and yet, were the objective of our Malachas to commemorate that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world. So what do the creation of the world have to do with building the Mishkan? The secret of understanding, this lies in the Gemara Brachas Taf Nun Aleph. The Gemara says, Rabbi Huda said in the name of Rav, B'tzalel knew how to combine the letters with which God created heaven and earth. It says in this week's parasha, Vayamale oisai ruach Eloi kim b'chachma v'sun v'das. And it says, by creation of the world, Hashem b'chachma yasad eretz koinen shamayim b'svuna. So, I was always bothered by this question. The Gemara says, But Salel knew how to combine the letters with which God created heaven and earth. Good for him! I'm glad he knew that. Whippy do that But Salel knew how to combine the letters with which God created the world. But what does it have to do with building the Mishkan? He needed to know how to build the Mishkan. He needed to know how to build, to sculpt, to craft, to weave, to sew. But why did he need to know the letters with which God created heaven and earth? What is the meaning of this Gemara? The answer to some of these questions could be found in the Yoitzrois of Parsha Shkolem that was composed by Rebbe Lezer HaKalir, like Toysus and Erevin says. By the way, the Magen Avram brings down in Simen Samaches, in the name of the Kolboi, that when Rebbe Lezer HaKalir compo- composed the Piot about the Chayos, so he was surrounded and burnt up with fire all around him. Now, certainly the multiplicity of expressions which are doubled and quadrupled in the Yoitzrois really require our attention. Because in the Yoitzrois of Shkalim it says, Oz Roisa, he saw, Visafarta, he counted, Vechanta, he prepared, Vechakarta, he investigated, Umadarita, he measured, Vech. He compiled, he, he piled, 
he counted, he considered, he relied, he, he counted, he tallied. What are all these expressions? What is it talking about? So, in the Hakdama of the Sefer Pa'as HaShulchan, of Rav Nachem Mendel of Shklav, from the Gedolei Talmidei Hagra, there he brings that Um, he heard in the name of the Vilna Gain. The Vilna Gain was asked, what are all these words in the Yotzer of Parshashkalim? And the Gura responded, there are 39 words in the Yotzer of Parshashkalim, and they allude to the 39 Malachais of Maisa Bereshis. And God rested from all of them on Shabbos. Therefore, we're, we're, we cannot do the Lamites Malachas of Shabbos. So the Gura has revealed a wondrous revelation that when God created the world, He created the world with 39 activities. And they are enumerated in this Yoytzer for Parshash Shkalim. That's why we have this lengthy text because these are the 39 activities with which God created the world. But here's the question. How do, does this revelation of the Gra fit in with the Gemara that we brought earlier? Earlier the Gemara brought that the source of the, the Malachas of Shabbos is from the Mishkan. And the Gra is saying that we don't rest from the Malachas of the Mishkan, we rest from the 39 Malachas with which God created the world. So how do we understand this? Are we resting from the 39 Malachas with which God created heaven and earth? Or are we resting from the 39 activities with which the Mishkan was created? You know, what exactly is Shabbos? Is Shabbos refraining from doing the malachas with which the Mishkan is created, or is Shabbos commemorating God's creation of the world? And from here we see that the source and the secret of the activities which are needed to create the Mishkan are the very activities with which God created the world. And the reason is, a Mishkan is an oilam katan. The Mishkan is a small world. It's a microcosm of the universe. So they are both true. On Shabbos we rest from the 39 malachas with which God created the world. But me, oimeid, besoid Hashem, who could com- c- comprehend, who could understand, who could appreciate the 39 malachas with which God created the world? Who, me, oimeid, besoid Hashem. So therefore, the Mishkan was given to us. The Mishkan is a microcosm of the universe. And the 39 malachas needed to build the Mishkan are the very 39 malachas with which God created heaven and earth. That's the reason why. And this is explained in the Sefer Ion Tfila, who brings the Gra, and he explains that Avani Moisif Ma'ad al Dvarov, the Ion Yaakov says, I will add. The reason we learn now Malach HaShavos and Malach HaMishkan is because the reason for Shvisa Shabbos is to commemorate God's creation of the world. Who could possibly know how Hashem created the world? And because we know from the Chachamim that the Mishkan is Mechuvan Keneged Kala Oilam Kulay, so therefore all the Malach HaMishkan were also Bebriyas HaOilam. Therefore it is upon us to be Mizboinein Be Malach HaMishkan to know what is the Malachai Sabriya? Meaning, it is upon us to contemplate and to study and to analyze what the Malachai Sabriyah were in order to know how Hashem created the world. Because what we're resting from on Shabbos are the activities with which God created the world. It's just that we have no idea, there's no way to know how Hashem created the world uh, and in order to determine that, we study how the Mishkan was created. Now, an amazing source for this concept, that indeed God created the world with Lama Tes Malachais, is found in the Bala Turim in this week's Parsha. There's an astounding Bala Turim in this week's Parsha. The Bala Turim says, on the, on the words, in this week's Parsha, Asher bara leikim la asois. La asois is oisios. Lamed teisha, missing a vav. 
Lamed Teisha. These are the 39 malachos God used to create the world. You hear this? Asher bar elikim la'asois. La'asois. How did God create the world? Lamed Teisha. And it's missing a vav. To teach, He did those activities for six days. You ready for this? If you study the first chapter of Horatius, You ready? This is unbelievable. From Bereshis until Vayichulu, you will find 39 verbs used in creation. Vayoimer, Vayivra, Vayavdel, Vayas. 39 action verbs in Bereshis. These are the 39 malachas with which God created the world. Likewise, from Vayakel until Loisavaru Eish, 39 words, except for the word Hashabas. So here we have it, that the Lamed Tess Malachas are not just the Lamed Tess activities which are needed to create the Mishkan, but in fact there were 39 actions with which God created the world. Asiya, Bria, Malacha, Havaya, Itza, Havdala. They all indicate Malacha to, to show that the world was in fact created with 39 malachas. It's just we don't know what they were. So in order to know what the malachas were with which God created the world, we study the Asiyas HaMishkan. That's why B'Tzalel needed to know the Oisiyas with which God created the world. Because the Mishkan is a microcosm of the world. So to create and build a Mishkan, you need to be able to build the world. So he needed to know the secret formula of how to combine the letters with which God created the world. Um, let's, let's study this further. We find in Chazal that Chazal compare and explain and explicate how every detail of the Mishkan corresponded to a different aspect of creation. For example, the Medrash says, in the Tanchuma on Parshas Pekudei, Amar of Yaakov Bar Isi, Hashem Ahavti Ma'ayin Beisecha Makoi Mishkan Kevaydecha, that the Mishkan is connected to the world. On the first day of creation, it says, Es HaShamayim V'Yasa'aretz. It says, Noite Shamayim Kayuriya. The Mishkan has Yuriya Yisizim. On the second day, Yehi Rakiya, there was separation. By the Mishkan it says, V'hevdila HaParaychas. On the third day, it says, Mayim, Yikavu HaMayim. In the Mishkan, it says, V'asisa kiar nechayshes, V'nashata shama mayim. On the fourth day, there were luminaries. In the Mishkan, there was a menorah. On the fifth day, there were birds. So in the Mishkan, there were karbanais. On the sixth day, man was created. In the Mishkan, there was a kain gadol, Adam. By creation, it says, V'yichu HaShamayim V'aretz. By the Mishkan it says, By Yevarech Oisam Moshe. By Bria Sa'olam it says, By Yechalalekim. And the Mishkan it says, By Hibiyam Kalois. It says, By the Mishkan, it says, By creation, By Yechadesh Oisai. By the Mishkan, By Yimshach Oisai, By Yechadesh Oisai. The Mishkan is the equivalent of heaven and earth. We see every detail of the construction of the Mishkan corresponded perfectly to one of the aspects of the Bria. And this fits in very well according to our presentation that. We rest on Shabbos from the activities with which God created the world, but who could possibly know what those activities are without studying the creation of the Mishkan? By the way, we could use this to explain the Gemara Megillah. It says, Vayhi b'ayoyim ha-shmini, oisai ha-yoyim, v'asimcha l'fnei ha-kadosh baruchu, ki yoyim shenivru b'ay shamayim v'aretz. It says, Vayhi b'ayoyim ha-shmini, and it says over there, Vayhi ara v'ayvoyker yoyim echad. So the eighth day of the Miluim, which was the day of the fulfillment of the creation of the Mishkan, corresponds, was, was Simcha before Hashem, like the creation of heaven and earth, because indeed the creation of the Mishkan was akin and analogous to the creation of the world. But there's another detail. 
there's another detail. Namely, that the Chazal tell us on the Pasuk, that it doesn't say Lahakim Hamishkan, but rather Lahakim Es Hamishkan. That together with the Mishkan, God erected something else also. What was that? He, cre- he created the world. Namely, the world was considered unstable until the Mishkan was created. So aside from the fact that the Mishkan is a small world, the whole world itself was unfulfilled and wobbly and unstable until God created the Mishkan. So it comes out very beautiful why B'Tzalel needed to know the letters with which God created the world. Because not only is the Mishkan a microcosm of the universe, and in order to make the Mishkan, do you need to know how to create the world, but literally by creating the Mishkan, you gave stability and fulfillment and completion to the world. That's another reason why B'Tzalel needed to know the letters with which God created heaven and earth. And with this we can explain a very cryptic comment of the Bahag. We're very busy with this Bahag. We mentioned and interpreted this Bahag in many different fashions. The Bahag counts the names of the five books of the Torah. Bereshis, the third book, Sefer Kayarim, the fourth book, Chumash HaPakudim, the fifth book, Mishnah Torah. So he gives a name to all of them, except for Shemais. Shemais he calls book two. And the Nitziv is bothered, this is something we've said over many times over the years, the Nitziv is bothered. If he has names for all the books, he should call Shemais with a name. If he doesn't have names, let him call Bereshis book one and Vayikra book three. Why is Shemais specifically called Book 2? And we explained that because Shemais is really the, the sequel of Bereshis. Bereshis speaks about the creation of the world, but indeed the world is not fully created until the Mishkan was created. The Mishkan is what gave stability to the Sefer Hayatzira. And with this we could explain one more anomaly, namely, in Parshas Vayakel, of all the Malachas of Shabbos, of all the 39 Malachas of Shabbos, the Torah only specifies one of them. Do not burn a fire in all of your dwelling places on the Sabbath. And Chazal argue, what does this mean? Why does the Torah specifically delineate not to light a fire on Shabbos? And Chazal say, one opinion is Havara was Lilav Yatzeis. Havara was Havara was given Lilav. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Nasan Aymer, Rabbi Nasan says, Lechalek Yatzeis. It was given to divide. Meaning, Rabbi Yossi holds, all the Lamentes Melachos are chiyuve misa, except for lighting a fire. Because the Torah doesn't say not to do any of the Lamentes Melachos. It specifies not lighting a fire, to indicate that lighting a fire is only a lav, it's not a chiyuv misa. Rabbi Nosson says no. Of course you're chiyuv misa. The reason why it specifically says loy sevaru eish, is to indicate as follows. The reason why the Torah specifically says, Loi Sevaru Eish, is to say that you don't have to violate all 39 Malachas to be Chayiv on Shabbos. It's enough if you violate just one of them. You don't have to violate all of them. So according to Rabbi Yossi, the reason the Torah specifies Havara is to teach Havara is fundamentally different. It's only a lav. And according to Rabbi Nassim, it's to teach uh, Lechalek. That since the Torah says, Loi Sase Malacha, you don't have to do all of them. But the Imre Yemes asks, why is Havara the only lav of the Lamet Hasmalachais that you're Chayiv Alav? Why is it the most lenient of all the Lamet Hasmalachais? Because Havara uh, was specified? It, could, it had to say one of them. But what's the logic of why Havara? And the Imre Yemes says something incredible. 
that all the malachais of Shabbos are asr because God rested from those malachais, but the malacha of Havara was not in creation because Chazal tell us that the first fire was created Matzah Shabbos. Even though Shamayim consists of Eshumayim, and even Malachim are Eshumayim, that was a different kind of fire. Our fire was created by Adam Rishon after Shabbos. So since the first fire was created after Shabbos, and the whole tachlis of not resting on, of resting on Shabbos, of not doing Malacha, is to commemorate the creation of heaven and earth. So if that's the case, if that's the reason for if that's the reason for the the Isser of Malacha, and it's not that God rested from fire because there was no fire, you would think that Havara is not even Usser. Because the only Malachas you know how to do are the Malachas God needed to create the world, but he didn't need fire to create the world because fire didn't exist yet. So now we understand. I would have thought fire is not us at all. So therefore, says Imrayamas, the Torah specified fire to indicate that in fact fire is us. I understand it had to pick one malacha. The reason it picked malacha is havara, because I would think fire is not prohibited whatsoever. And we could add based on... Now, so you, so you could ask, what do you mean? The malachas you know to do are the malachas that are needed to build the mishkan, not the malachas that Hashem rested from. But according to what we're saying, it's very beautiful. The malachas we're now to do are the malachas that Hashem rested from. How do we know what those malachas were? Those are the malachas needed uh, to build the mishkan. But we could add humbly that, that this explains Rabbi Yossi Shita also. Why is Havara, in fact, more lenient than any other Malacha in the Torah? And that's because I would think Havara is Bechlal, not a Malacha. Because Hashem did not rest from it in the creation of heaven and earth because it didn't exist. By the way, Toysus is Shita in Psachem and Avheim in the name of the Riva, that according to Rabbi Yossi, Havara is not really a Malacha at all. It's not even a Malacha Kala. And this could be explained based on the idea that the lighting of the first Rish, uh, Eish was not until Matzah Shabbos, and therefore, Melechus Havara was not a chilek of the Masa Barashas, and therefore it's not a chamer like other Melechus. Perhaps we could add, by the way, a very beautiful idea, that when we were learning Barashas, we mentioned all the various things that were unsullied by the sin of Adam Arishan. We mentioned the hands were not affected, the scent of smell, the voice pipe, his nails, kibadava aim. It comes out there's another thing that was un- unaffected by the scent, by the sin of Adam Arishain. Fire. Fire was also unaffected because there was no fire. Maybe that's the reason why the future base Hamikdash will come down in fire because it was never sullied, it was unaffected by the sin of Adam Arishain. So this gives us a new perspective of Shabbos. Shabbos is to commemorate Hashem created the world with 39 activities. Those 39 verbs are found in Bereshus until Vayichulu or in the 39 words from Vayakel until Vayichulu until, excuse me, Loi Savaru Eish besides the word Hashabbos. But in order to know what the 39 activities with which Hashem created the world, for that we need to study the Malachas HaMishkan, because the Mishkan was a microcosm of the universe. Moreover, the universe was considered uncomple- incomplete and unfulfilled until the creation of the Mishkan. And therefore, the, the Malachas needed to build the Mishkan are in fact those Malachas with which God created heaven and earth. Okay, I want to share with you um, a small subject on Parshas Pekudai. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.